Today I am going to be doing a book review on the two novels that kind of go together, The Vincent Boys and The Vincent Brothers by Abby Glines. Glintz? I'm still not sure how you pronounce her name. I've kept meaning to figure that out and it just keeps slipping my mind, but I'll figure it out one of these days, I'm sure. Um, Oh, this is the Vincent Boys. This is the first one. And then the next book is the Vincent Brothers. I love these covers. They're pretty hot. Um, so I do like the other covers that they have too. I think one has the girl's face and she's licking a lollipop and another one has her kissing an apple. And they're just really bright and really fun. But these are the covers that I got, and um, I like them. So, The Vincent Boys follows Ashton and Bo, and Ashton is the preacher's daughter, and she's kind of the good girl in town. She is dating the quarterback, the all-American good boy, Sawyer, and Bo is kind of the town's bad boy. He's also Sawyer's cousin. And these three were best friends growing up until Ashton and Sawyer started dating. And then Bo just kind of fell off to the side and stopped being friends with Ashton. But he's still quite close with Sawyer. And the book starts where Sawyer is away for the summer. And Ashton and Bo start to kind of rekindle their friendship. And it kind of leads into more. Um, Really, I probably shouldn't have liked this book, considering how much cheating bothers me. Especially whenever the guy getting cheated on is somebody who seems to be so nice and is just a real sweetheart. And just, I probably really shouldn't have had any sympathy for Ashton or Bo. But the plot and the characters really, it didn't matter. I read through both of these books within a couple of days. It was just, I didn't care about the cheat. Well, I cared about the cheating, just not enough to make me hate the characters who were cheating. They were still sympathetic. And that's something that I really liked because that's so hard to pull off. Um, you know, Ashton never felt like she could be herself around Sawyer. She's got to be this perfect girl for him, but with Bo she can be herself. And um, it's just so many different situations that are pretty realistic, even though I've never been in any of them, but hopefully I never will be in any of them either. Um, but uh, I really, really enjoyed all of the characters in this book, and it's a quick read and a pretty easy read, but not in the way that made it seem too young or too juvenile, but just that you always want to keep reading. It's just more. One more chapter, one more chapter, one more chapter. And that's another thing that I kind of hate. <laughs> I'm okay with cliffhangers at the ends of the books. Cliffhangers at the end of each chapter, that means there's more to read. So I go, one more chapter, one more chapter. Oh, it's four in the morning. One more chapter. At least a cliffhanger at the end of the book, there's no option. You have to go to bed. You have to go to sleep. So that was The Vincent Boys. There's a big twist at the end of this book that I kind of expected. So I'm kind of happy I was right because I was hoping for that. Um, and I really liked the way that it did end up, so that helped my enjoyment of the book too. Um, I'm not sure if everyone's going to figure out the twist at the end. Some people probably have, some people probably haven't. But, you know, either way, it's one that hopefully you'll enjoy if you pick it up. And then The Vincent Brothers is what is kind of, it's kind of a sequel but also kind of companion novel because um, Sawyer's the main character in this book, instead of Ashton and Bo, like they were in this one. 
So it's kind of Sawyer's story after what happened in The Vincent Boys. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about this one because that would spoil everything for The Vincent Boys. But I really like this one as well. I actually kind of like, I liked Bo more than Sawyer, but I liked the Vincent Brothers more than the Vincent Boys. And that's just because there's more interaction between Bo and Sawyer in this book. And I have a huge thing for reading about family relationships that involve like brothers or cousins, like, or even just really close guy friends. And I think that's because I don't have any brothers. I grew up with three sisters. So reading about brothers is completely new. Like, it, I find it harder to predict what male characters are gonna do because I grew up with, well, including me, there were four girls in the family, plus my mom, so there's five, and we're all completely different. So it's easier for me to predict what a female character can do instead of a male character and brotherly relationships are just kind of fascinating to me. I've ha I have sisterly relationships, so, you know, brother relationships are something that's really new and different, I guess, <laughs> but I really enjoyed both of these books. I have just finished reading Opal which I loved, uh, so a review will, will be coming up on this soon. And I also finished my first classic, Les Miserables, even though it is freaking long. Over 1,000 pages, 1,200 and something, I think. 1,200 and... Thirty-two, one thousand two hundred and thirty-two pages in this version. I think there are versions that have more pages that are probably a little bit smaller than this one, but that's a lot of pages. But it was a really good book. Um, I think I read the abridged version whenever I was in high school. Um, so there's a lot more that happens in this book, and we just seen the movie last week as well, and. Yes, I cried a lot, um, <laughs> a lot, but it's kind of weird because we, then we went to go see The Hobbit and The Hobbit book is like 300 pages long and it's being made into three different movies and then this is over a thousand pages long and it's one movie. <laughs> that seems kind of strange, but okay. And then, what am I reading? I just started reading for my next classic, Anne of Green Gables, on my Kobo, which is downstairs. So, I can't show it, but that's the next classic I'm reading. I've read it before. I actually grew up on Prince Edward Island, and I've been to the places that are described in the book. So, reading Anne of Green Gables was pretty much something that you did if you lived <laughs> on BEI. Um, so it's going to be kind of fun to revisit that and remember all the times and like, oh yeah, I was there. Oh yeah, I tried that raspberry cordial and all that stuff. And then I am also reading Splintered by A.G. Howard, which is, oh, the other book is sliding, a debut novel. It came out on January 1st of this year, so it is going to be my first debut author of the year. and. I picked this up after my last haul, so it was going to be in the next haul video that I was going to do, but I decided that I couldn't wait and I wanted to read it now because it's a kind of a retelling of Alice in Wonderland, I think. Um, it says, Welcome to the Real Wonderland up there, and I am in love with this cover. The cover is the reason why I bought it. I was doing so good. I just walked into Walmart. I needed a magazine. I walked past all of the books to the magazine rack and then on the way back this really bright cover caught my eye and I, then I ended up buying it. But that's what the cover is. Just so pretty. 
and it is about a character named Alyssa Gardner who can hear the thoughts of plants and animals and she kind of hides it because her mother is in an institution and she doesn't want to end up like her mother. So I'm really excited to read this. I love Alice in Wonderland. Um, and if it's even close to how much I love Alice in Wonderland, I think that I should probably fly through this book. I haven't started it yet. The bookmark's just on page one since I just finished Les Miserables last night. But I am going to start this one at some point today, and I am really, really excited. So, yes, that's all for now, and I'll see everybody next time.